Hello and welcome to this Code House tutorial. We just published the product component, which is this one, which is a product section with the main features for selling your products. So you have, for example, a preview image with a nice uh, zoom effect. Then you have rating, uh, radio buttons, um, number input, and so on. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can create this section yourself using a Kodi frame. Now, if we look at the code, you can see that we have, obviously, we have the structure. And if we switch to the SCSS, we have nothing. Well, that's because this component is a template that combines multiple Kodi House components. Uh, for example, if we check here, we see, you see we have a list of dependencies, which means that this component includes all these, uh, let's call them sub-components. So in this tutorial, I'm, I'm not going to show you how to create, uh, to create each one of these elements from scratch, because some of them, if we consider their accessibility as well, well, they can be quite complex, like, for example, uh, the rating widget. We are just going to um, combine these components using the utility classes of uh, CodeFrame. To get started, I've saved my components uh, by bookmarking them in my project. And now I can export them alongside with the CodeFrame by using the export tool. Now, if you are not a pro user, you don't have access to the export tool. You can just copy and paste each component manually. It's the same because all the components we are using are completely free. I have already exported this project. It's right here. So let me show you the content real quick. This is basically CodeFrame. You can download CodeFrame on GitHub if you want. And the only difference is that we have a um, components folder here with the CSS of the components and uh, another components folder into the JS folder with the, the JavaScript of the components that have JavaScript as well. Okay, so we can uh, start. Let's go to the index.html. And uh, now we want to launch the project. So let me just um, launch the project using Gulp. Okay. And now let's go back to our components saved. Um, actually, first of all, let me check, double check the layout of this uh, product uh, component. So we have a section over here with basically just the breadcrumbs. Then we have a grid with the image on one side and the product information on the other side. Okay, I think we can start. Let's keep this here as a reference and um, now we want to copy, first of all, the breadcrumbs component. You can copy the HTML. And here we need to create a container. So here we go with the container class to align the content in the center. We can set a max width with one of the max width utility classes. I'm going to use a max width uh, adaptive uh, LG. Okay, so uh, let me paste the breadcrumbs component in uh, here, here I have shop tees and t name. So let me do the same shop tees. And the current one is t name. We can remove this one and save. Let's go back. We need some space so we can apply a class of padding YLG to add padding vertically uh, to our component. Perfect. Now, right before, um, sorry, right after the breadcrumbs component, we have a grid. So inside this grid, we need two elements. The first one is going to be the image zoom component. Now, if you go here, we can copy the HTML of the image zoom component and paste it here. Okay, now um, I have also included, imported in this project, the same image you see in the demo, this component of the product component, sorry. So let me copy the new path and let me replace this one. And I should probably delete this as well. 
let me check. Yes, so here we go. Now we have the um, uh, image zoom component and it's already working because the JS of the component is already there. Okay. Uh, in this second section here, we need, um, let me check. So we have, first of all, a title. So we can just add a H1 product name. After the title, we have the rating. So let me copy the rating. We need the read-only variation. Let's copy the HTML and let's paste it here and uh, save. Let me check. Here we go. Um, title, rating. Right after the rating, we have a paragraph with uh, the price. So we can add a just some Lorem Ipsum and then we need into another paragraph uh, to add the discounted price uh, which is let's see, $49 and then we need a new price of uh, $29 and save. Okay, so this, um, the price is slightly bigger than the paragraph. If we check in our example, it's the same size, so we can actually add a text MD to make it bigger. Here we go. Now it looks much better. Now, what's next? So we have this component here. This is the, I believe, the bat group component um, yes and I need the radio variation because obviously here you can select just one value so de facto this is a radio selection so we can uh, move here copy the HTML and uh, right below the text component we can paste uh, our radio buttons now let me remove this one for a second we can uh, use for these uh, T sides and then here, the sides with reference to the to these sides, which is small. Then we can uh, duplicate this, remove checked, and these sides here is going to be medium. And then arch. and extra large and don't forget to update the id and the four tags as well excel this one actually is disabled okay let me check here what we have so here we go this is disabled as you can see it's not selectable and uh, it's, it's, um, the layout is slightly different compared to this one. Um, that's because we can uh, add another class here, which is BTNS gap. Let's try with, sorry, just one P here. And in doing so, we have created some space in between the options. I believe we also have Uh, yes, we also have a variation for for when a button is disabled. So btn disabled. I think it's this one, the right class. Yes, it's the one. Okay. What's next? We have the number input with a button. So let me create another container for the number input first of all copy paste it here okay number input here let me actually let me add another container for the number input Okay, and then we need a, just a button 
with the class of btn primary and add to cart. Okay, number input and button. Now let's start from the um, smaller screens, so kind of a mobile version, let's say. Um, all the components are here, we just need to add some spacing and some additional style to make sure everything looks fine. First of all, we need some um, uh, margin bottom for the breadcrumbs. You can either add the margin bottom here, or if you don't want the margin values to be affected by the text size, because remember we use mostly M units, you can add the container and apply a class to the container. So, margin bottom, uh, let's try a small version. Okay, now we need to remove the image caption and we can actually, instead of uh, completely removing, we can use the accessibility utility class SR only. And then we can, uh, we want to create some gap in between the image and the product information because these are both uh, grid items, we can apply a grid gap and the utility class to the grid element. And here we go, now we have space. We want to remove maybe this label as well. And uh, it's right here. Once again, let's apply an SR only utility class. And then we have the rating. Uh, we need some space here in between uh, the text and the price and uh, what's above and below this element so we can just apply a margin y uh, md to this element. Okay, we want to align the number input with the button. So let's use a flex. Let's Let's see, yes, now we have both elements aligned. Um, they are taking the same height, so we need to remove the quantity label. And once again, it's better if we don't remove this element, we just hide it for, um, for users that are not using a screen reader. Now, as you can see, these elements have the same height. To add some gap in between these elements, we can actually target this element here and add a margin right uh, xs. And let's see how it looks. Okay, sounds good. Now we can, um, we want this button to take all the available space. Now because it's inside the flex uh, container, uh, it's a flex child, we can actually use the class flex grow. And as you can see, I'm using autocomplete. You will find um, extensions for popular for popular code editor on uh, in our documentation. So it's really helpful. Now we need some space below this element here as well. It's the BTNS component. We can add a match. Actually, let me create a container. Okay. And let me add the margin here. Margin bottom MD. Let's go again for MD. Perfect. Okay. So it's looking fine so far. These stars are uh, for sure uh, too big. So let me reduce their size. Uh, and once, once again, because we use M units, you can often re reduce the size of an element by using. Uh, text size utility classes, and in this case, if we set, for example, text uh, uh, xs, as you can see, this becomes smaller. Then we can uh, probably move this inside container and use it to set the margin top of, uh, I don't know, let's try xs. Okay, xs seems fine. And then in our example here, we have also a link. Let's add this link as well. So right below here, we have about 50 reviews. Here's the link. 
So the few classes here, the text may be smaller and uh, the color, we can make it color in edit. So it takes less attention and then uh, with a flex class here, we can move them um, on the same row. And uh, finally, we can apply margin left uh, XXS. Let's see. Okay, see, it's about fine. Now, the, for the responsive part, we want this layout to change. Uh, first of all, we need to target the medium breakpoint. Okay, so here are our grid items. We want a call six, so half the grid. At the medium breakpoint for both the grid items, now if we resize the window, you can see that when we reach the medium breakpoint, the layout is split in two, and now we have um, product information on one side and the preview, preview image on the other side. And when we reach the Excel breakpoint, actually I want to increase the size of the um, LG Excel. So this one is going to be five if we want to uh, increase the size of the image compared to the product information section. And as you can see, now we have more space for the image, uh, less space for the product information, which I think looks better. So once again, split in half and then more space for the image. We're almost there. We just need to modify this final detail here. So we want to um, reduce the impact of the discounted price by reducing its uh, opacity or maybe turning its color to a color contrast medium. Let me see. So it's this part here. Uh, it's the del element. We want to set the color uh, contrast medium here. Here we go. And then uh, a margin right XXS. Let's try. And uh, we want to remove the text decoration from uh, this other element here. Text decoration known. Okay, I think we're done. Everything seems to be uh, working fine because the logic of these components uh, it's already there. I mean, uh, I haven't really implemented anything about any of these uh, components. We have just been uh, playing with the uh, Kodi frame uh, uh, layout utility classes to move things around and basically create a new component out of existing ones. All right, so that's all for this tutorial. Feel free to uh, modify this, uh, this component, add your own style, your own typography, colors, uh, uh, anything you want. And uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.